Today, I discovered a startling fact. I live in the most expensive city in the world. And it's true. Just a few weeks ago, the Economist Intelligence Unit ranked New York, along with Singapore, as the most expensive city on earth. Inflation is up, stocks are down, and honestly, I cannot keep spending hundreds of dollars on helicopter rides, skyscraper climbs, and observation decks just to have fun. So this month, I challenged myself to discover the most interesting things this city has to offer completely for free. I started my search on Google, naturally, and saw the same ideas come up again and again. Window shopping on Fifth Ave, strolling through the massive Central Park, soaking up the holiday vibes at the Rockefeller Center, admiring the Grand Central Station, getting your 10,000 steps on the High Line, posing for a picture in front of the vessel, stopping inside the Empire State Building, and of course, taking it all in in Times Square. But let's be real. I've done this stuff a million times. And if you've ever been to New York, you've probably done them too. I want to do things that aren't so cliche. So I went back to the internet to dig a little deeper and put together a new list of activities before heading back out into the concrete jungle where I was determined to have fun for free. Let's start off with something iconic, like The Daily Show. I was thrilled to learn that tickets to the show and a ton of other shows are free at oneiota.com. You just have to be willing to wait around for a few hours at the studio to make sure you get a seat. But don't worry, you'll make friends while you wait. We're so excited we're here today to see The Daily Show, and Leslie Jones is the host, which we're very excited about, and that's um, why we came. Between waiting in line and watching the show, I was there for five hours, but it was worth it. For other forms of live entertainment, stop by the Lincoln Center one evening during a free event. I visited on a salsa night, but events range from musical performances to talks and live podcast recordings. Mine was pretty long, so you might find yourself waiting a while here too. If you don't want to wait in a line but still want to catch a show, you can head downtown for a free jazz show slash open mic night that happens every Sunday evening. The music was great and there were plenty of games to keep the energy up, plus there was no requirement to purchase any food or drink. This place was awesome. Switching gears. I trekked to Hamilton Heights to visit the home of America's first Secretary of the Treasury, Alexander Hamilton. Yes, that Hamilton. Visitors start in the basement to learn about Hamilton's life and the history of the house before moving upstairs to tour the main level with a guide. You'll see Hamilton's office, the formal dining room, and the parlor. And one of my favorite features of this room and maybe the entire house is the pianoforte. So the pianoforte here is the original pianoforte that came from England in 1795. Hamilton and Angelica duetted together at this piano. We're very lucky to have it, I think. So. Yeah, that's incredible. At the other end of Manhattan, you can discover Hamilton's resting place at Trinity Church, located at the end of Wall Street. A ton of historical figures from America's early days are buried there, and you can discover them as part of the church's scavenger hunt. And when you're finished, you can stop inside during a service to admire the 18th century architecture. Since I was all the way down in the financial district, I figured I should catch a glimpse of the Statue of Liberty. So I hopped on the Staten Island Ferry for the first time ever and got a pretty good look at Lady Liberty, a proper visit to whom would cost you about $25. Once in Staten Island, I enjoyed a free visit to Fort Wadsworth, one of the oldest forts in the country. As you walk through the property, you'll see signs teaching you about the various structures, and the most interesting part was Battery Weed, 
but unfortunately I wasn't able to go inside without being accompanied by a park ranger. Back in Manhattan, I stumbled upon free ice skating right in Bryant Park in the middle of Midtown. The rink is open during the day, but it was extra festive to be there at night with all the city lights around you. If only I had a pair of skates. Lastly, New York has several impressive museums with free admission, like the Museum at the Fashion Institute of Technology. The exhibit that I saw featured women's clothing in chronological order starting in the 1700s. And the building right across the street featured ultra-modern, almost futuristic garments that I think were designed by students. On Saturdays, you can visit the Jewish Museum for free to learn about Jewish history and heritage. This is one of the oldest Jewish museums in the world, and it covers 4,000 years of history. This is only my second time ever in the Bronx, and I came all the way up here to go to the Bronx Museum of the Arts. So hopefully it's something interesting. This small museum features contemporary works that celebrate the cultural diversity in the Bronx and New York at large. The National Museum of the American Indian is another free museum that I loved. Each exhibit teaches you about Native American culture and what life was like in New York before colonizers stole the land from the natives. It's small enough to see in one visit and the photography room was my favorite. It reminded me of my trip to Arizona last year where I learned about some present challenges facing the Native American community. My trip to Arizona was a lot of fun and very informative. I recommend checking that video out right here. If you enjoyed this video or discovered something new, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in discovering other cool things to do while you travel, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.